dignitaries in the audience, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen. The Asian Development Research Institute, through its empirical and theoretical studies, has done a commendable job of making social science research more inclusive and innovative to meet the emergent social needs. Developing nations like India need socioeconomic information about their population to design redistributive policies. Concern has also been expressed about the efficacy and efficiency of such public data collection and the gaps which exist in the Indian social statistical. The initiative taken by the Institute in organizing this conference on social statistics is therefore timely and provides an opportunity to assess the state of play in this field. Statistics have always been intimately linked to the social dimensions of the state. In the 17th and early 18th centuries, particularly in Europe, when it was more fashionably called political arithmetic, attempts started at calculating population size and life expectancy because the analysts believed that a growing population was evidence of a healthy state. These early social researchers who believed that information about society could help governments devise wiser policies were called statists and the new qualitative evidence-based science soon began to be called statistics. The discipline has evolved over time. Great names like August Comte, Hubbard Spencer, Emil Durkheim, and Talcott Parsons imparted to it philosophical and sociological foundations and scientific methodology. These together help it explore social structures and change and thereby prepare better for social action and intervention. As a result, today's social statistics are the foundation of the structural functionalist tradition in sociology and social sciences. It serves two purposes. The first and the more visible purpose is to provide us with an accurate and true description of the society. The other use is in the context of constructing social problems, where statistics are used to support or discredit particular points of view. A leading commentator has amplified the approach, and I quote, sociologists speak of social problems being constructed, that is, created or assembled through the actions of activists, officials, the news media, and other people who draw attention to particular problems. Social problem is a label we give to some social conditions, and it is that label that turns a condition we take for granted into something we consider troubling. This means that the processes of identifying and publicizing social problems are important, end of quote. One of the purposes of statistics is to facilitate the discovery, understanding, quantification, modeling, and communication of the facts about the world. In the context of social statistics, the task of describing and quantifying human behavior with all its uncertainties and unpredictability is fraught with risks. The statistics often only offer an interval of plausible values for an unknown parameter and is at best an approximation of the reality even when the uncertainty itself has been described in some detail. 
This has also led to the uncharitable remark that statistics is the only science that enables different experts using the same figure to draw different conclusions. It seems inevitable that good statistical analysis includes judgments. The need for this judgment opens the door to unethical bias, biasing of results, biased data collection, and partial reporting or manipulation of results with intent to mislead. The empirical analysis today are more likely to be based on a combination of several very large data sets containing millions of observations which are processed through specialized statistical software. As a result, errors can be insidious and be detected only by sophisticated forensic. This makes the task of extracting meaning from any given set of data a difficult task. Every new set of statistics, therefore, has to be put to test in order to assess its validity and usefulness. Critical scrutiny could and should raise a few pertinent questions about origin, process, and purpose. Together, these would shed light on credibility or bias, methodological validity or shortcomings and motivations, if any. As this audience is well aware, in our own country, the pioneering work in this field was done by Professor P.C. Mahalanobis, who founded the Indian Statistical Institute, and by Professor Sukhmate, who was the driving force behind the statistical branch of the then Imperial and later Indian Council for Agricultural Research. Both were of immense significance in the period immediately after independence when access to good statistics was critical to the manner in which we addressed our developmental challenges, confronting limited resources on the one hand and the budgeting needs of our teeming millions on the other. Both necessitated optimal and immediate utilization of resources. The relevance and effectiveness of policy judgments, therefore, depended on the quality of data and the efficacy of analysis and interpretation. It was important, therefore, that public institutions had access to the best social statistics and statistical analysis. Today, the discipline of statistics in our own country boasts a separate ministry, the Ministry of Statistics and Program Implementation, a separate arm of the bureaucracy, the Indian Statistical Service, a number of information gathering mechanisms, such as the National Sample Survey Organization, or the NSSO, and a vast array of central and state government departments engaged in the task of collecting and analyzing data. We also have a host of specialized research institutes, nearly a dozen research journals, and more than 100 educational centers offering training at master's and PhD levels. This mechanism provides for some well-established avenues for collection of social statistics in the country. The decadal censuses, the 15th edition of which mobilized more than 2.7 million officials for conducting door-to-door -door household service, remains one of the most extensive primary data collection exercises in the world. The civil registration system and the sample registration system also provide fairly reliable social data streams. The health information management system and the National Family Health Service have become established avenues of health-related 
statistics. In addition, social and economic, and economic surveys by the National Sample Survey Office provides data relating to social and economic development, industrial production, and the agricultural sector. Both the ministries of human resource development and labor similarly have well-defined avenues for creating and disseminating data relating to education and unemployment. And yet, ladies and gentlemen, all is not well in the Indian social statistics sector. Concerns have been raised about the quality of data being generated as also about the duplication of efforts to collect statistics across various government departments, inaccessibility of national data archives, and the infringement of privacy by government's data collecting machinery. Based on the recommendations of the Rangarajan report of the year 2001, a national statistical commission was put in place in 2005 and the Ministry of Statistics and Program Implementation released a new data policy in 2009 and the national data sharing and accessibility policy in 2012. Despite this, the problems with our official statistics appears to persist. Some of the criticism of Indian public statistics, especially when it comes to measurement of cross-cutting social issues such as gender disparity, inequality, poverty, and growth seems to be valid. Our public statistics have also attracted opprobrium on issues relating to measurement of parameters relating to the service sector, the unorganized sector, and unemployment figures. This is not only undermining the credibility of the Indian statistics globally, but also hurting the analysis of some of the most important elements of Indian economy. I have seen only yesterday the text of a Gazette notification of 15th of June 2016 issued by the Ministry of Statistics and Program Implementation putting into place 10 fundamental principles of official statistics pursuant to the adoption of the United Nations General Assembly Resolution 68 to 61 adopted on the 29th of January 2014 on principles of official statistics. The French economist Thomas Piketty has lamented the huge gap in statistics in India exemplified by paucity of data on income tax and the reluctance of the government to release the caste census results to which the Honorable Chief Minister referred. Even after the government recently released official figures for the income tax for the year 2012 and 13, which has prompted a lively debate about the extent of tax evasion in India, with commentators noting that there were very few tax returns at the highest end of the income spectrum. Piketty told the international media that, and I quote him, the data was too thin to draw significant conclusions about the levels of inequality in India, end of quote. In an interview to the BBC, Piketty added, and I quote him again, we see the same problem with access to caste census data that was supposed to clarify the link between caste, income, wealth, and income inequality. This puts a limit on our ability to put India on a map in terms of inequality, unquote. The criticism of India's publicly collected social statistics is not limited to foreign workers. In July 2011, 
the governor of the Reserve Bank of India expressed concern over the quality of statistics collected by government agencies. A few months later, the then Commerce Secretary admitted that India's export figures for the period April to October 2011 were found to be inflated by 9.4 billion US dollars due to miscalculation of certain items and data entry errors. Not long afterwards, our chief statistician conceded that the accuracy of the index of industrial production was questionable. Similarly, the then deputy chairman of the planning commission argued that the national sample survey had under had underestimating household consumption affecting poverty estimates. In this context, some broad challenges in the area of social statistical analysis and interpretation can be identified. One, we need to identify the gaps in official data and analysis and determine ways on how best we can bridge them. The quality of data collection by various government agencies depends on the completeness and accuracy of the responses. Significant non-responses and time-varying patterns can distort the information. There is thus the challenge of getting credible and complete data and in good time. Second, Given the fast pace of changes in the structure of the economy in the face of deregulation, liberalization, and competition, it is important that various indices that reveal the underlying mechanisms of our society and economy are further refined and updated in order to provide relevant and timely information to the policy makers. Third, in the context of our interconnected global village and open economies, the responsiveness of markets to data releases and information has become more acute. False data or its wrong interpretation can result in market volatility, which can have cascading effect on the economy. We therefore have to focus on maintaining certain data standards and improving the quality of our training and statistical ed education. And I hope that the adoption by the government uh, last week of the new standards prescribed by the United Nations would help considerably in that effort. There are no easy answers to these challenges. Perhaps the experts gathered here would shed light on them and suggest solutions or correctives. Finally, I thank the organizers for inviting me today, and I wish success to the conference in its deliberations. Jai Hind.